Happy Monday, everyone. Josh is Severe Weather. I hope you all had a great weekend. It has been a busy weekend, to say the least, in the Severe Weather Department. I was watching tornado warning after tornado warning over parts of Tennessee yesterday, Ohio as well, and lots of severe weather now in the Texas, Oklahoma regions. And we are going to continue to stay very active. So let's go ahead and talk about areas where that weather is going to potentially get even worse here over the next couple of days. Multiple storm complexes riding up and over a ridge of high pressure. We've got a boundary here that's going to serve as a focus for some pretty big hail and strong winds coming in multiple waves. We're going to see some severe weather later today into this evening over the mid-Atlantic states. Another wave of severe weather expected to roll through Texas here this evening, as well as Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, northern Florida, and over the high plains south and east of Denver. So uh, another night where you're going to want to make sure your car is somewhere indoors, like a garage covered, as we're going to see some pretty big hail in the forecast here. Some of the rain we're getting out of this is going to be beneficial. You can see here's our latest drought monitor, and we definitely need some rain across the high plains into Kansas and Nebraska. And we're going to see some of that here later this week, unfortunately, with some severe weather. Um, we also have some very dry weather over the mid-Atlantic into Pennsylvania and parts of the lower Midwest. That area I'm a little bit more concerned about getting some heavy rain. We can take a look at the European and look at forecast rain totals here over the next week. And you'll see uh, some improvement coming for Ohio and Pennsylvania here, some significant amounts of rain the next couple of days. But in between storm systems, we are going to stay dry over a good chunk of Iowa, eastern Minnesota, southern and western Illinois, basically the Corn Belt here into Missouri, Indiana, not seeing any relief in the dryness. You have to get farther west into Kansas, southwestern Nebraska, eastern Colorado to see that relief from the drought. And that may come at a cost here. In fact, we're looking at some very heavy rain amounts that may get over three to four inches in eastern Colorado. Uh, we're also looking at very heavy rain tracking north and east of Dallas amounts that could get over three to four inches, uh, maybe even over five inches over parts of Alabama and Georgia. So a very active pattern coming up here this week. And south and west of this boundary, we're looking at some pretty nasty heat that's going to build in here. Uh, so we're getting some relief, but not everybody is going to see that heavy amount of rain. We could use some rain here where I live in Raleigh, and uh, looks like most of that's going to skip by to my east, uh, unfortunately. So uh, again, not everybody's going to capitalize on this very active weather pattern. Here's a look at the upper level chart. You can see there's a pretty big upper low that's going to spin across Michigan and another upper level low, <clears throat> excuse me, that is going to uh, spin over the uh, eastern Pacific. That's going to bring some very fast wind flow aloft through the southern United States, and that is going to sustain multiple complexes of severe thunderstorms. We've got to get um, multiple systems coming through here, moving at pretty quick speeds. And while not a big tornado maker, uh, we are going to see multiple waves here of complexes that bring strong wind, that bring very big hail, uh, and just a continued battering here over the southern United States right through the end of the week. And then that starts shifting northward over the weekend up into Kansas, Nebraska, and Missouri. So we do see things shifting some, but uh, it's going to be a very active week here over the southern U.S. Here's a look farther down at 700 millibars. You can see some areas of very fast winds moving across Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia over 50 knots at this height. That is going to lead to multiple storm complexes, and they're going to accelerate due to this faster wind flow aloft. You can see even in the Thursday morning, very fast winds, and then we start to see some improvement in the severe weather pattern by the end of this upcoming week and into the weekend, uh, where that, uh, that belt of higher winds does start shifting northward some and out of Georgia and Alabama, and now moving up into the Tennessee Valley, into Oklahoma and, and Kansas. But uh, just a very active weather pattern coming up here. Here's a look at the GFS. You can see very clearly low pressure spinning across the northern Great Lakes, uh, right across the eastern seaboard today and tonight, and then just kind of stuck here over the deep south, back across the high plains, just a very slow moving boundary that's not really gonna budge much. Uh, south of the boundary, extreme amounts of heat and humidity. North of it, we're going to enjoy cloudy or cooler weather. In between the two, we're going to have very active weather. And this is a look at Wednesday afternoon. Here is Thursday. Here is Friday um, and into Saturday as well. We do see that starting to shift north and east and another 
potentially busy day on Saturday over Tennessee and Kentucky and northern Alabama. So we do see that eventually shifting northward and northeastward in kind of a same time frame as what we saw this past weekend. So the Carolinas, mid-Atlantic region, northern Georgia could get pretty unsettled again here this upcoming Sunday as the pattern repeats itself. So uh, Father's Day, if you're planning to go golfing, I would say be on the lookout for severe weather over Georgia, over North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, Southern Ohio, and Southern Indiana at this point. And that could shift a little bit more. The latest forecast from the Storm Prediction Center for later today uh, highlights an area of severe weather from Colorado down into Northwest Florida with enhanced risk for severe weather south and west of the Dallas-Fort Worth region. And you can see there's going to be some pretty big hail expected again here towards the evening hours over north central and northeast Texas. Uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, a lot of you got hit by hail last night. Unfortunately, that's going to be the same song and dance here this evening. Uh, same story here overnight tonight over the high plains from near Colorado Springs on down into the far northwestern tip of Texas. Areas that are dealing with severe weather early in the morning here on Monday, we'll see it again here this evening and potentially into the overnight hours. Uh, not a big tornado risk, but we could see a few of those here southwest of Dallas, uh, south of Abilene across um, uh, the uh, heart of Texas and the big sky part of Texas here, and potentially some strong winds as well over this same area really, and then across north central and northeast Louisiana down to about Pensacola, uh, De Funiac Springs and just west of Dothan, Alabama. Now tomorrow we see a threat for severe weather shifting a little bit farther east across all of the deep south, Dallas-Fort Worth up to Ardmore and on east, right along and north of Interstate 20, maybe getting close to Little Rock, Oxford, Mississippi, uh, north of Birmingham over to about uh, Macon and Warner Robins, Georgia, and all the way down to near Tallahassee as well. And uh, we are going to see a pretty big hail risk across this entire region, 15% chance of hail, maybe some big hail again across some of this area. Uh, we do see a, a small area where tornado chances are possible uh, from just east of Dallas and Frisco across Shreveport, Monroe, Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian, down to about Montgomery and just west of Dothan, Alabama, and certainly a risk for severe wind in here as well. I'm going to show you the east in just a minute. Um, and then as we get to day three, we see more severe weather uh, and potentially significant severe weather from near Jackson, Mississippi on eastward into southern Georgia. Um, you can see this is day three, a slight risk, but some of that is going to be significant severe weather. Now we'll shift that east for you guys here. We can see there is a slight risk today over the mid-Atlantic region down to about Wilmington, North Carolina. Most of that's going to be over a small window of time from late this afternoon into the first part of tonight and primarily a wind threat at this point. And I'll show you that here. Um, we do have a 15% a chance uh, of a severe weather wind report somewhere in this region from South Jersey down through the eastern Delmarva down to the uh, Hampton Roads area and into the eastern part of North Carolina. I showed you the deep south as well. Not really a tornado risk, but it is possible we could see one or two maybe lower end tornadoes across the same region that's in the slight risk and a threat for some hail as well. As we get to tomorrow, a quieter day over the mid-Atlantic region, but you can see here's our next wave coming into Florida, Georgia, right on the Florida, Georgia line here. Um, as we look here, there is somewhat of a chance for some tornadoes. I did show you that somewhat of a chance for hail all the way over uh, east of Bainbridge and Valdosta to near Savannah, Georgia. And um, we also have a chance for some severe wind across this region as well. Now on day three, a slight risk shifting a little bit more to the east. And maybe we involve more of the low country at South Carolina in on that severe weather risk, Jacksonville, uh, Florida as well. But the combined area does show significant wind here. We're going to look at another storm complex that gets going over central Mississippi that tracks along and south of I-20 into the southern half of Georgia, maybe even sneaking into uh, the low country of South Carolina here Wednesday night. We'll have to keep an eye on that part of the area as well. So a very active stretch of weather here over the next few days. You can see on the NAM satellite, multiple complexes popping up here. This is 7, 8 o'clock this evening, moving south and east. More storm complexes tomorrow morning shifting east and southeast. Florida will get in on some of this as well. This is Tuesday night. We see additional storm development near Dallas-Fort Worth continuing into Wednesday. And this storm complex here Wednesday around 1 o'clock central in Mississippi is what we're going to keep an eye on here over parts of Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, and northern Florida here Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday night. Let's look at the HER model. First, we'll start in the south central states. We do have severe weather this morning 
over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. That is going to weaken as it moves south and east across central and southern Oklahoma and into Louisiana. We could see some storms that get kind of nasty here late in the afternoon over Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. But more storm development towards about 5, 6 o'clock this evening over north central Texas, right over Big Sky Country, and then tracking towards the Metroplex and south and west of the Metroplex this evening. More very big hail possible and possibly even a, a tornado or two somewhere in this zone. Uh, Oklahoma is going to have storms overnight. We see more severe weather potentially carrying through the Arklatex into the Arkla Mist tomorrow morning. Um, these storms will move through Mississippi and then weaken some, and we'll see additional development over the Panhandles region here Tuesday evening, and then weakening some as we get into Tuesday night. I'm going to zoom in closer so you all can see where storms fire later today. And you can see we'll have some storms over the Red River Valley here around midday today, and then a bit of a lull. And then we see storm tracks near Abilene, near Cisco and Ranger towards Weatherford uh, towards about six, seven o'clock this evening. Very big hail, maybe three inches or more apple size potentially uh, near Weatherford, near Cleburne and to the west of Waco. And that continues into the first part of tonight. Dallas, Fort Worth, you'll have to keep an eye on this. The her takes it just south and west of you, but I would not certainly rule it out at this point as another wave could get going here. It could be pretty rough here right around midnight tonight. And then additional weather over southeastern Oklahoma overnight tonight. So we've got several spots that are likely to be in a watch and warnings here overnight tonight over Oklahoma and then tracking south and east and weakening tomorrow morning near I-20. But maybe a, another flare up coming near Tyler, Longview over to about Shreveport and on south of Shreveport towards Natchitoches. That'll be Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening as well. Oops, sorry about that. Got a little trigger happy. Uh, farther north, the panhandles are getting rough weather this morning. Uh, we will see some showers and storms across Oklahoma throughout the day today, maybe a few severe storms, not really widespread severe weather, but additional weather moving through south and east of Oklahoma City towards McAllister, Ardmore, and Durant here as we get towards this evening, and especially overnight tonight. We get a break tomorrow. It won't be as bad a day tomorrow, but uh, looking back towards Dalhart and near liberal Kansas, we see more storm activity here tomorrow late in the day into the evening, and we could see big hail and maybe a tornado in this region as well around 8 to 10 o'clock here tomorrow night. Let's shift gears. We'll shift to the southeast towards Dixie here. We've got some storms expected to move through Georgia this morning. Some of them could be strong to severe, then a break. And then we have additional storm activity. Uh, firing up late in the afternoon today across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, all the way over to the low country of South Carolina. Some of these storms could produce locally strong winds, very heavy flooding rainfall, and uh, certainly some hail as well. And then we get a break overnight before additional complexes shift farther north and east. This is tomorrow morning around uh, late morning near Yazoo City in Jackson, Mississippi. You see another complex out ahead of this, which could start getting nasty here over southwestern Georgia and south uh, eastern Alabama right around lunchtime tomorrow. Uh, this tracks south and east towards the coast in the afternoon. Another wave follows it, so we could get hit twice in some of these areas here tomorrow. Northeast Florida as well, maybe all the way down to east of Orlando and Daytona. Um, and then we get a break, and then we're going to see additional showers and storms getting going Tuesday night into Wednesday, and this whole area will be under the gun for some severe weather. Here's a closer look at the parts of the Deep South. And um, I will move this along a little bit quicker for you guys to see. We're going to have a quiet morning then this afternoon. Natchez, Macomb, Hattiesburg, where we've got an NCAA uh, regional game or sub-regional game between Tennessee and USM. That's going to be potentially impacted by this weather towards the end of that game. So we're keeping an eye on that. Monroeville, Dothan, near Tallahassee here this evening. Then we get a break. Another storm complex comes down through northern Mississippi right through Oxford and Starkville over to about Meridian, Tuscaloosa and Birmingham overnight tonight. We'll see additional storm activity right behind it coming in another wave. You get about four hours between complexes and then you get hit hard again here. It looks like right around the Delta region over to Yazoo City, Jackson, Mississippi, late tomorrow morning, uh, Alabama, south of Montgomery, all the way over to about Dothan, Columbus, Georgia, um, all the way into Albany, Georgia here um, during the early afternoon tomorrow. Um, this will be just a quick break before we see additional storm activity here at night, moving through central and northern Alabama, Mississippi, and north Georgia here, maybe even getting towards Atlanta later tomorrow night. So a lot of you are going to see probably three to four strong storms, maybe severe storms over the next three days. 
We'll take a look farther to the east, and I don't think we're going to see quite as much severe weather over South Carolina today. And the reason why is we have more cloud cover, and we're kind of in between everybody else here when it comes to severe weather. But I would not rule out a stronger storm in the low country here this afternoon and early this evening. You can see right down 95 from Fayetteville, down through Manning, and then down to the coast on 26 towards Charleston, over to Georgetown. We could see a few heavier storms early tonight. That will move out, though. We've got a front moving through, just a few lingering showers here overnight. A quieter day tomorrow across this area, but then that front's going to shift back north and east, bringing back some moisture, cloud cover, and some showers here tomorrow night. You can see over the Midlands, we do see a few showers and storms, and then Wednesday looks to be more active. We're watching what's coming out of Alabama and Georgia, which could track right along the Midlands, right over the CSRA, and over to the low country here later on Wednesday. Uh, we do have some severe weather potential here across North Carolina and Virginia. Just a few showers this morning, uh, maybe some heavier bursts of rain. But as we get to the heating of the day, we're going to watch things around the 95 corridor and on eastward around 4 or 5 o'clock. We could see a few heavier storms. Some of them could produce some hail and locally strong wind. There is a slight chance for a tornado. This is about 8 o'clock tonight. You can see Greenville, New Bern, uh, over to Elizabeth City, Virginia Beach areas could be under the gun right on through about 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Then things weaken when they hit the outer banks. Just some leftover showers later tonight into tomorrow morning, but overall quieter, cooler, more comfortable weather for your Tuesday. We'll start to see moisture starting to move back into the area from the west here later Tuesday night. Uh, in the northeast, um, we're not likely to see a widespread event of severe weather, but we will see some heavier rain and storms moving through eastern PA towards Philly, Allentown, Scranton, and then over towards New Jersey and Delaware here right around dinner time. So a rough evening commute expected here. Uh, these will spread through New York City here later on into the evening hours, then into southern New England and eastern New York here overnight tonight. And at that point, I don't think we're dealing with any kind of widespread severe weather, but there could be some heavy rain. Uh, before we get cooler and more comfortable on Tuesday. Speaking of comfort, you are going to notice the comfort meter dropping quickly here in the deep south. Uh, daytime high temperatures are climbing. Uh, the southwest will see some triple digit heat, Southern California, but Texas and Louisiana and Oklahoma are going to get nasty hot here by the end of the week into the weekend. Um, that heat does spread into the deep south here over the weekend and into the Carolinas by the beginning of next week as we return to the 90s here. Some true summer finally coming into parts of the uh, mid-Atlantic region. But looking at Texas the next few days, uh, we are cooking here. 100 degree heat expected. This is the GFS, the surface temperatures, uh, or two meter AGL temperatures. They do typically show up a little too hot. So if you see 115, it's probably more like 110 or 111, but it's still very hot. Uh, so the oven has been cooking here, and now we are, we're gonna drop, we're gonna rise to about 100 around Houston here on Friday. Alexandria, Natchez, uh, Baton Rouge, all going to be pushing 100 degrees. Um, when you get to Dallas and south and west, Austin, the I-35 corridor is going to be cooking here well over 100. Um, and this heat continues to stick with us. So despite all the severe weather, if you have lost your power due to these strong winds or strong winds that we're seeing during these nighttime storm complexes, this heat is really going to be nasty on your body. So please, please, please prepare yourself for outages due to the severe weather followed by this kind of extreme heat. We could see some record highs here um, in the next 10 days or so across this region. In the rest of the Southeast, we're getting hot across Florida, mid upper 90s possible here, uh, but the real heat doesn't really get in here until next weekend. Father's Day, we could be looking at close to 100 degree heat around Jacksonville, 98 in Tallahassee, near 100 around Baton Rouge, Hammond, Covington, and I think some of these numbers are probably going to be over forecast. 106 in Shreveport seems a little high, uh, but nonetheless, you'll be looking at triple digit heat across this region. So Father's Day, great day to go to the pool. Uh, finally, we're going to look at the tropics. Um, El Nino in play here, but look at the last four days. We've actually dropped off and leveled off. So people talking about extreme El Nino here this summer, maybe jumping the gun. We'll keep an eye on it. We're still in an El Nino, but we may see some wavering over the next few days as we get different waves coming across the ocean. Still well above average though, the Atlantic Basin is hot. We're running well above average. In fact, one of the warmest starts to tropical season in history that we could tell. I say that we can tell, the data only goes back so far. So obviously there's a lot more data that's missing, but we're running above average. And that certainly means an early start to the tropics right now, uh, but nothing of immediate concern uh, according to the National Hurricane Center. And you can see we've got waves coming off of Africa. They've actually started to pick up a little bit here in the last week or so, feeding in off of those warmer waters. But 
nothing organized at this point. We're going to keep an eye on Central America. Some of the models are showing some slow development in here. I don't think we're talking hurricanes in the Gulf next week, but I do think we have to keep an eye on maybe a weaker storm or two, both on the Pacific side and on the Atlantic side as well. Um, here's a look at the latest GFS, which is tucking its tail with tropical development. You can see at the end of the week, it does still try to spin up a weak area of low pressure near Honduras by this time next week. Uh, but no hurricanes in the Gulf, nothing threatening Texas, maybe a weak storm somewhere at some point. But this is, you know, 300 hours out, so I don't think <laughs> it's going to have a great handle on things. But obviously, we've got tropical moisture building down in here and something at some point has got to come up into the Gulf. I just don't think we're talking cat two hurricanes in the Gulf like some of the videos out there are showing. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, so, you know, keep an eye on things. Be prepared at this point. In the Pacific, we have Typhoon now weakening to Tropical Storm Gukal. That is shifting east of Japan. No immediate threat to Japan, thank goodness. But it was a pretty formidable storm here a few days ago. Uh, we also have a cyclone um, in the uh, Arabian Sea now heading towards Pakistan and far northwest India. And I'm a little more concerned about this is by Parjoy. You can see a few days ago it had it going towards the Gulf of Oman. Now models have shifted. Now they're going towards Pakistan. Here's Karachi. Millions of people live here right now. The, they're still in the zone, but overall a shift towards the east, and this could bring a lot of rain into Pakistan and northwestern India. So I did want to show that to you guys because it's important worldwide, a pretty big storm. GFS still trying to bring it in towards Karachi, though, which would be a very big concern. Uh, the ICON model, though, is kind of dancing around here and then weakening the storm, then turning it back to the right and well south and east of Karachi. And the HWARF model, um, shows a much weaker storm coming near the India-Pakistan border. So I'll be watching it for you guys. But uh, at this point, you know, we obviously pray for the best for these folks in the uh, Indian Ocean, in the Arabian Sea. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Um, I give all the glory to God who has given me the courage and the strength to do this every day. This is my calling. Um, this is my spiritual gift to you all. And I really hope that you take that gift because um, I do not um, take any gifts lightly. The gift from God to do this is one that I feel very blessed to do. I'm uh, going to get a little edgy with you guys. Not a Bible beat down, but I wanted to read a passage that has really been weighing on my mind, and I'm guessing probably some of yours as well. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolater, or idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And Paul just lays it right out and says, all these people, um, you know, effeminate, that's homosexuals, uh, people who, who lie, cheat, and steal, people who abuse others, people who um, cheat on their wives or their husbands, people who have big time drinking problems, um, none of them are going to heaven. And I'm praying and I'm praying hard for a lot of people out there because we all have family members or friends or people in our circle that are that fall into this category. And do we not want them to go to heaven with us? The good news, good news here is it's not up to me. I'm not to judge. It's up to God. But through his son, Jesus Christ, First uh, uh, Corinthians 6, 11, and, and such were some of you, but ye are washed. Ye are sanctified, that's made holy, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And I think a lot of people want to pick and choose here. Um, you know, as a Christian person, I have staunch beliefs. That is the word of God. Uh, it does not mean, by the way, that just because I don't support those lifestyles doesn't mean that I hate those people. And I think that's very important because I think people that fall into that category want to say that everybody who has a Christian belief hates them. That's actually not the case at all. I pray for people like that. And I want you all to know that because God loves us, he has put us just below his level at his feet, that we have the ability to be washed of these sins, to be washed of this lifestyle, to be sanctified, that is made holy, to be justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is still time for you, if you fall into this category, to repent, to turn to God. Through his son, Jesus Christ, um, he has washed those sins away from you. He will take that burden off of you and allow you to change your life and to put God first between you and all of those problems or all those habits you may have had. And I wanna pray for you and any of your family members because that is so important to me. Um, it is so easy to be divided today with everything going on out there. This is not a political commentary. Um, I have gay friends, trust me. 
Uh, but I pray for them because I really want them to inherit that kingdom of God. Paul says that's not going to happen unless they turn to God and are washed clean. And so I want to pray for you if you have any uh, spiritual needs, um, because it means a lot to me. And I only come to people here in love, in the love of God that's been given to me, because for 30 years of my life, I did not follow God. I hated things. I wasn't going down some of the path of, of some of these folks that Paul mentions, um, but I wasn't going towards God either. And that was a huge void in my life, knowing that, you know, I could seek God and seek his, his righteousness and to be washed of my sins. He can wash you of your sins as well. And I want to pray for you. So I hope you all have a blessed day. And I really look forward to uh, talking with you again tomorrow morning. Take care and see you then. Have a blessed day.